Enjoy this 20 minute video on yoga focusing on ahimsa, nonviolence, and compassion for all animals. Make sure all postures are comfortable and stop if there's any pain. Begin this practice by lying on your back in Shavasana, corpse pose. Allow the legs to be a little wider than hip width apart and the hands about a foot from the hips. Relax the back, the arms, and the legs. Allow the back of the head to settle into the earth and take slow, deep breaths. Feel the body. Be aware of the breath. For today's practice, we'll reflect on ahimsa, nonviolence, and the oneness of all beings. The Buddha said, all beings tremble before violence, all fear death, all love life. See yourself and others. Then whom can you hurt? What harm can you do? As we go through some gentle yoga postures, we'll reflect on the animals and how we can be of service to have more compassion for the earth and the animals and all living beings. When you're ready to come out, start to rotate the hands around the wrists and give the body a long stretch as if you're just waking up in the morning. You can interlock the fingers, stretch the arms back, and then bend the knees and hug the knees to the chest. Roll to the side in fetal pose to come out, push off the hands, and then make your way to Sukhasana, sitting comfortably cross-legged. Take a few slow deep breaths here. As we begin the yoga asanas, or postures, many named after animals and mimicking the animals, let's take a moment to reflect. Why is it that we can love our cats and dogs as pets, but then some other animals we choose to harm or kill if we're not vegetarian or vegan. As you meditate on the breath and observe the breath, just take a moment to contemplate that. Why do we call some animals pets and others our food? In yoga practice, we want to feel the connection to all living beings. And this is one reason we do the postures named after animals so that we can feel our connection to the animals. So let's begin the yoga exercises and asanas, yoga postures. When you feel ready to come out of meditation, come onto table pose, onto all fours. The back as you exhale, arching on the inhale. Exhale to cat pose, inhale to cow pose. Repeat at your own pace to warm up the spine. Position the hands so they're directly under your shoulders and the knees are under the hips. Exhaling the round. As you continue with cat-cow pose, start to think when we do this posture in yoga, what's the difference between a cat and a cow? Of course, there's many differences, but is there a difference in the fact that one may want to live just as much as the other? Now hold the back in scared cat, navel lifting up into the spine. Feel the stretch of the shoulders. The cats feel fear, as do all animals. Sit back on the heels and then come back to table pose. Stretch the arms forward in puppy dog. Take slow, deep breaths. Some countries eat dogs. Some countries eat cows. Some countries eat pigs. What's the difference? Rest in child's pose and reflect. Well, with no pain. From table pose, Stretch the arms forward again, coming back in a puppy dog pose. You can stay there and breathe or shift the hips back to the heels and then lift the knees and the hips into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Spread the fingers wide, lift the hips up and gently release the heels back and down. If that's not comfortable, return to child's pose or puppy dog. When you're ready to come out, rest in child's pose and observe. Downward dog stretches the back and the legs. 
Child's pose releases lower back tension and restores the energy. Come back to all fours. Walk the arms forward again for puppy dog pose, releasing the spine and then back to downward facing dog if comfortable. Observe the breath and this time start to bend one knee at a time to stretch the hips and the hamstrings. And finding your downward dog pose again, pushing the floor away from you so that buttocks reach up to the sky. So come out, knees lower, and rest in child's pose. Here's Da Vinci, my father's vegan dog. Even the animals can live a nonviolent diet. Into dolphin pose. Come out, lower to child's pose, or for core strength, stretch the legs as you walk the feet back into a forearm plank with the shoulders over the elbows. This strengthens the arms and the core. Try to lift the thighs up and press back through the heels. To come out, rest back in child's pose. Observe the body. Come back to dolphin pose. In Japan, unfortunately, over 20,000 dolphins a year and small whales are slaughtered in a cruel way. The whole family is driven into a cove. These are the dolphins that become held captive for human entertainment, such as SeaWorld, or when people swim with the dolphins. You can help the dolphins by not supporting these cruel and inhumane acts that keep dolphins enslaved in captivity. Lie on the stomach and relax. Preparing for some back bends, we'll start with the half locust. When doing these postures, let's consider how can we remind ourselves that the bugs too are living beings and want to live. Start by lifting one leg, inhale, exhale the lower, and alternate sides at your own pace. Then hold one leg in the air steady. Repeat with the second leg. Hold the leg up and breathe. Think of the bugs next time you go to kill them. Maybe you can set them free instead. Next is Cobra Pose, Bhujangasana. Bring the hands under the shoulders. As you inhale, start to lift the chest. Hold and breathe. Make sure there's no discomfort in the back. This brings low back strength and opens the upper back. Then relax. Even the snakes are also living beings. All animals fear pain, feel pain, and want to live. Bring the hands alongside you and then lift the whole body up for the full locust pose, Shalabhasana. You can also interlock the fingers behind you. Bring the feet on the ground, wider than hip width apart. Take a breath or two, and then bring the knees to chest as you stretch the legs up to the sky. Bend the knees if you need to, so that there's no discomfort. Legs up in the air pose. When you're ready to come out, lower the feet on the ground. Take a break, and then repeat. Hug the knees to the chest. On the inhale, stretch the legs skyward for legs in the air pose again. You can stretch the legs and spread all 10 toes or bend the knees if you need for a more gentle version. Focus at the center of the throat as you take slow, deep breaths. This is a gentle version of why the yogis do headstand and shoulder stand, so the blood and lymph can flow back towards the heart. If you want a more active version, stretch the arms back behind you to create an L shape in the body. Next is restorative yoga. We're going to take a towel for this and make a roll for restorative fish pose, Matsyasana. Place the roll towel on your mat, sit on the yoga mat, and then place the roll towel under the shoulder blades. When you lower down, this will create an upper back bend. The arms stretch out in a T-shape so the tops of shoulders can release towards the earth. Let the head be centered take the legs about two feet apart, just allowing the legs to relax. Slow the breath down. Fish pose. 
This is a pose to help open the lungs, the respiratory system, and also give space and release to upper back tensions. Breathe slow and deep in and out through the nose and relax. As you breathe in fish pose, Matsyasana, consider the fact that fish are intelligent beings. In fact, a study by Oxford University showed that some fish might even learn faster than dogs. Fish are alive and want to live, just like humans. Fish are not commodities and they are not food. Fish are our friends. The good news is that we can make conscious choices with every meal. Remove the towel and lay Just flat on your back. Upside down child's pose. If comfortable, hold the wrist with the hands on the shin. This relieves lower back tension and hip tension. Then place the arms in a T-shape and for a deeper spinal twist, lower the legs to the right as the head rolls to the left. If this is not comfortable, return to the first version, starting with the feet on the ground. Switch sides when you're ready, inhaling legs to center, exhaling legs to the left as the head rolls to the right. Hold and breathe. When you're ready to come out, bring the knees to chest and pull the knees in tight and then release the feet to the ground. Relax and observe. Place one hand on the belly and one hand on the upper chest. Rest and breathe and observe how the hands move with the body movement when you breathe. Inhale slow and exhale slow. Full yogic breath. Start to breathe now like a wave, inhaling, allowing the belly to rise, middle, then upper chest. As you exhale, let the chest fall, middle, then lower belly. A gentle wave-like breath from lower to upper torso on inhale, relaxing on exhale. This full yogic breath is a great tool to relax and center the mind. Then stretch the legs out in Shavasana. And roll the head side to side for final relaxation. Tense and release each muscle of the body one at a time. Squeeze the hands. Relax, lift the chest and drop. Shrug the shoulders, relax. Squeeze the face to the nose, stretch the mouth wide, relax. After tensing and releasing the muscles, allow the body to fully rest into the earth. Now we'll use the power of the mind to relax even deeper. This is called auto-suggestion. Start to bring awareness down into the right toe, big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth toe. Repeat silently, I relax the toes, the toes relax. The left big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth toe relaxing. Repeating silently, I relax the toes, the toes relax. I relax the feet, the feet relax bringing awareness to each part of the body as you relax deeper. I relax the ankles, the ankles relax. I relax the knees, the knees relax. I relax the legs, the legs relax. I relax the lower back, the lower back is relaxed. I relax the middle and upper back, the middle and upper back is relaxed. I relax the shoulders, the shoulders relax. I relax the arms, the arms relax. I relax the hands and fingers, the hands and fingers are relaxed. I relax the stomach, the stomach is relaxed. I relax the face, the face is relaxed. Letting go, observing the breath. When you're ready to come out, start to rotate the hands around the wrists, 
and give the body a long stretch as if you're just waking up in the morning. You can interlock the fingers, stretch the arms back, and then bend the knees and hug the knees to the chest. Roll to the side in fetal pose to come out on your back in Shavasana. Observe the breath and then stretch the arms back when you're ready to come out. Hug the knees to chest and circle side to side or rock the legs side to side. You can also circle the knees again to massage the back. Roll to the side fully to come out and rest in fetal pose. Pause, observe. Use the strength of the arms to roll the spine up, coming into Sukhasana again, a comfortable cross-legged seat. Observe the breath. Try full yogi breath as we did earlier. Without the hands touching this time, let the belly expand, middle and upper chest on inhale, exhale and reverse. If you still need the hands on the body for feedback, you can place one hand below the navel and one on the upper chest to feel the movement. Inhaling like a wave, exhaling like a wave. Inhale, belly, middle, upper chest, expanding like a wave. Exhale, relaxing in reverse like a gentle wave. And continue. As you hear the waves in the background, feel the breath like a wave, helping to relax the mind. You can practice this breath anywhere and any time where you need to get centered or help to concentrate and focus. Then release the hands, place the thumb to finger, and just observe the breath as is. Feel the inner peace that pranayama, breath exercise, and yoga postures bring. Meditation is where we simply observe the breath, letting the mind be absorbed in the point of concentration. Observing inhale, observing exhale. As you observe the breath and reflect on the oneness of humans with all animals, I'll leave you with a quote from Swami Shivananda from Bliss Divine. He says, if you want to stop taking mutton, fish, etc., just see with your own eyes the pitiable struggling condition of the animals at the time of killing. Now mercy and sympathy will arise in your heart. You will determine to give up flesh eating. Shivananda says, all slaughterhouses should be abolished and the use of animal flesh as food should be absolutely given up. Flesh eating is unnecessary, unnatural, and unwholesome. The countless instances of reputed philosophers, authors, scholars, athletes, saints, yogins, and rishis who lived on vegetable diet conclusively prove that vegetarian diet produces supreme powers both of mind and body and is highly conducive for divine contemplation and the practice of yoga. To learn more about animal rights and how to shift to a healthy vegan diet, go to PETA.org, MercyForAnimals.org, TheHumanely.org, AnimalPlace.org, or HumaneSociety.org. For information on sunlight yoga and chair yoga teacher trainings and books, go to www.SunlightYoga.com. Have a great day. Namaste. Thank you.